most of you notice this is this is a tsunami in Japan. The takeaway I want you to have is a lady in the bottom right hand corner. What do you see in her face? She's fear. She's afraid. She doesn't know what to do next. They can be big. They can be a little more regional in nature. We got we've got the nursing home fire. We got the California fires. That's down in Georgia. This one is any recognition for that one? That's New Orleans a few years ago. Okay. This is North Dakota. It's a flood, single event. Have you ever seen a sandbagging operation? That's what it looks like. But it also looks like the young man right there. Only thing he's had today is a drink of water. You can see the dirt around his lips. That's father and son. They just protected dad's house. A couple of quotes for you from Ann Morrill. My life cannot implement an action in the demands of all the people to whom my life responds. So who are your staff going to respond to? This is from Michael Laffron, one of my friends in the industry. Finding ways to relieve the anxiety matters. We don't spend enough time on it. Now take a look at that, the resident's face. What do you see again? That fear. She does not know what to do. Who's going to give her that assurance? It's going to be a staff member that's prepared for it. And how are you going to prepare them? Consulate manager, Michael again. Another obstacle to overcome is making the decision whether you're going to evacuate or you're going to shelter in place. And once you've made the decision, what are you going to do? How are you going to implement that decision? How's the, how's the staff going to respond? How are they going to know how to respond? When you look at all the drivers for the how to decision make, it used to be the old days, oh, the administrator decided we're going to go climb into buses. Now it could, be the, it could be the president, it could be the governor, it could be your emergency disaster preparedness local office. And you can see all the pushes there. This is Father Charles Fahey. He's been in the, the Catholic nursing home industry for 55 years. His statement is these are decisions that profoundly affect the lives of the people we love. You're vulnerable residents. You have responsibility for them. Jeff Harrod's pers uh, perspective, partner up with your facilities. I think of them as pre-event partnerships. If you don't create those relationships before the event, it's too late once it's happened, okay? And some of the kinds of ones I'm talking about, up down here is your fire department, up there might be your energy company, your communications company, it could be your local emergency and disaster preparedness. Who's prepared for this event that's going to happen? It's not the one in the bottom right hand corner. They've stayed home, they've prepared themselves, they haven't reached out. Another obstacle is, a, is management turnover. What are you going to do with your leaders? Because you know what, they're, they're the, your decision makers. And if you don't prep them and practice them and give them the checklist and lots of opportunity to learn to make those decisions, you're not going to succeed. Anybody recognize him? Yeah. Absolutely. We all know him as Sully. Sully Chels, Chesley Sullenberger. What did he do? He saved a bunch of lives. He saved a bunch of lives. And how he did it? was from crew resource management. It's not just your frontline staff, it's gonna be your managers. He had checklists, re repeated trainings. He never experienced a loss of an engine in his life, but he had experienced the training and the drills and the drills. And a drill held at three o'clock every, every third Wednesday is not a drill, so be careful. What about isolation of fire? How important are closing doors? Does it make a difference? Is your staff going to react or respond to the training? Reaction is panic. Response is trained. Okay? First, Michael Tobias. Each person has to know their duties. And I'm not saying that they've read it out of a book. It's too late to go pull out the book. How effective is confinement of fire? Okay, I got a couple of pictures from you. Some of you will recognize this. It's from 2003 up in the northeast. This is the hallway. You can see the fires rip down through there destroyed the entire, the entire uh, nursing facility. If you take a look at this room on the right hand side, we're going to flip the camera around. That's the picture right there. You don't have to look for residents. There were no residents in the room. They pulled the residents out, but the doors were left open. So what happens when you close the door? A little further down the hallway, there is a picture of a door that was actually closed. There it is. That's from the hallway side. So what does it look like from the inside, from the resident side? How much protection is that fire door? Is the staff going to respond or are they going to react to it? I don't need 15 seconds this time. Move it forward. That's the inside of the same door. How, how much protection do you get from fire doors that you close? A lot. Okay, the staff has to know that they have to be trained on these kinds of things. You have to push them forward, you have to practice. And it's all different, whatever you practice is not what's going to happen. Okay, it'll be something like that. Stop by 1405 if you want more information. Thank you very much.